Mahalo Chair, Regents, and our entire Hilo Ohana for that amazing, amazing uh, welcome. I want to lead into our award presentation today by weaving together some recent findings regarding the value and affordability of the outstanding University of Hawaii education that all of you are responsible to govern. You know, when we discuss both tuition rates and our request to the legislature for support, we always make it clear that public higher education represents a shared value and therefore a shared investment by students and their families, along with the taxpayers of the state. And recognizing the limits on these two sources, those of you who have been regents for a while have, have seen the work we've been doing to accelerate our progress in diversifying our um, economic basis with extramural funds, with philanthropic resources, and our work to engage in public-private partnerships. So we're not always going back to uh, the same sources of tuition and state general funds. But at the end of the day, we're here for our students and for Hawaii. Um, so last month, UHERO, the pretty much the most trusted source of economic information in Hawaii, provided new updated estimates of the financial value of completing a UH degree. And following a newer methodology used in other re, uh, recent national studies, they were able to compare earnings of UH degree completers and non-completers. And they found that over the course of a lifetime, bachelor's degree holders from our universities earn about $2.8 million, which is 27% higher than non-completers. Our community colleges award primarily Associate of Arts degrees and more applied Associate of Science and Associate of Applied Science degrees. And UHERO found that these uh, applied AS and AAS degrees, those graduates earn nearly as much as those with a bachelor's degree. That's really an important part of what we do as the University of Hawaii system. That's it comes in at 2.7 million, and that's also 22% higher than the, those who leave the programs. So one of the things we look at when we talk about our mission, it's to advance economic mobility for those who need us. Um, we use Pell Grant eligibility as a proxy for economic disadvantage. And UHERO looked at this and they found that while individuals from economically disadvantaged backgrounds tend to earn lower wages in the marketplace than those from more affluent households, completing a college degree is what mitigates this effect. So five years after graduating, they found that degree holders with Pell Grants earn 5% more than non-degree holders from wealthier households. And by the ninth year post-graduation, the wage advantage for a Pell Grant recipient with a college degree matches that of those from wealthier households. So the college education that we provide here through our UH campuses may well mitigate and even diminish the intergenerational cycle of lower socioeconomic status. So we were surprised, frankly, and disappointed to find that an AA degree by itself was not of high value in the labor market. Many of the AA students in our community colleges aspire to, a trans to transfer to a university, ours or some other, to earn a four-year degree. And we work hard, as I think many of you have seen, on our intercampus pathways. So starting at a UH community college is actually the most affordable path to a bachelor's degree. And it's not just about the money. Our community colleges provide nurturing environments for students of all ages. You met some yesterday. Uh, for whom higher education may seem daunting and community colleges welcome them with an open door. Um, yesterday, uh, Dan's team published a news item highlighting the transfer performance of the UH system. And it, this is from the Community College Research Center, a national outfit. They reported on the success of a full cohort of community college to university transfer students in every state. And for the year of study that they had just reported on, 58% of our UH community college students who transferred to a UH university earned a bachelor's degree in six years. So 58% may not sound great, it's pretty good, but we're one of only eight states to have outperformed the national average. We also had, and again, looking back at equity, a 57% completion rate 
for the transfer students from low, low income families. So almost exactly the same as our 58% for our total population. And that's 5% above the national average. So to be clear, we're not satisfied with this, but we, we've got more to do, but we're proud to already be among the national leaders. And this brings up the question of cost. And you've all heard the public narrative that tuition rates are spiraling out of control. And you hero found that's exactly the opposite here at the University of Hawaii. They adjusted for inflation and all of our resident tuition rates have actually declined over the past 10 years for residents. There's multiple reasons for this. Um, and we all need to acknowledge that the legislature and the state of Hawaii are very generous with this university system. We do submit requests for uh, additional funding every year, uh, as do universities around the country and every part of state government. But we are really appreciative of the level of financial support that we do get from the state. Um, and I'll also say that as a board, you and our entire administration has been really disciplined in containing tuition rates. We've had many years of freezes, and it is only the extraordinary inflation over the past several years, fortunately now under control um, as we exited the pandemic, that justified even the modest 2% increases that will take place in uh, two years hence and three years hence. Um, at the same time, we've maintained financial stability. We strengthened our finances, in fact, with for the first time, our reserves are consistent with board policy across the UH system. And, you know, it, it hasn't been clear how, um, what a challenge this is for everybody in the administration to be able to do this. Last month, I got an email from a reporter at a news source I didn't recognize asking, how can you explain Hawaii's extremely low overhead rate? And I didn't really know what she was asking me, but so I referred the question to Dan who followed up. And it turns out she was a real journalist working for a real publication. And she had seen a report that we had not noticed. And this is from a pretty conservative leaning group called ACTA, American Council of Trustees and Alumni. And they reported that among public universities, Hawaii had the second lowest administrative cost per student in the country. So uh, Oklahoma beat us. Um, and we don't have a simple explanation and Calbert talked to her and you know, we're trying to figure this out. Um, but certainly our high level of shared services and systemness and, you know, yesterday and today, you've seen two campuses working together. Um, we are um, perhaps the most highly integrated public higher education system in the country. And that contributes to containing administrative costs. Um, we also hear regularly about the massive level of um, student debt. It's over $1.7 trillion nationally. But as with other narratives, the story for UH is different. And the most recent uh, federal data in the US Department of Education college scorecard for UH Manoa, which is our most expensive campus. And this is for undergraduates, not law students, sorry. Um, but it reveals that just 31% of our students who start uh, as undergraduates full time took out federal loans, less than a third. And for the less than a third of our graduates who leave with debt, the median level was $18,500, less than the cost of their first new car and more than offset by those earnings that I just mentioned that you hero documented. So um, finally, just one more point on this, um, going beyond students and their families, I talked about the investment of the state and last month, we also saw, saw something we hadn't noticed before. Uh, a group called the National College Attainment Network looked at the value of higher education to states. And they did an analysis of all 50 states um, and they indicated that for Hawaii, the economic gains to the state associated with each of our graduates, and we graduate close to 10,000 a year typically, um, the state GDP gross domestic product goes up about $86,000 per graduate per year. 4.9 jobs are generated, and they looked at uh, return to taxpayers. Each graduate, according to their calculation, accounts for an expansion of the state tax base by about $4,400 annually. And when they did the math on this, um, 
there they calculate that the state of hawaii recovers the public investment in public higher education in an average of 6.2 years um, thus reducing the pressure for future tax increases so that's why this is a shared investment by students and their families along with taxpayers the benefits accrue to all of us so um, achieving these kinds of outcomes for students families communities it's a, it's a team effort so um, today it gives me great pleasure to be able to share with you the presentation of the president's award for excellence in building and ground maintenance and this is given each year to an individual who has exhibited sustained superior performance in maintenance landscaping and custodial or trucking positions and this year it is mr shannon aseo So I'll read a bit, it will present, but um, Shannon, he is the sole electrician here at the Hilo campus. Um, this is a system award, by the way. This is not a Hilo award. This is for the entire University of Hawaii system. He started working for UH Hilo in 2017 and has had an incredible impact on the campus. Um, the sheer volume of volume of electrical work order requests completed within the day would lead you to believe that there were several electricians at work here, but he single-handedly oversees and completes all of the requirements for the campus. Then he assists other trades to help clear the entire building maintenance backlog. He's the go-to helper for student-focused projects, such as assembling shelves for the campus food pantry, installing signage for the new eSports lounge, refinishing the outdoor furniture for the library lanai. He's praised for his commitment to saving money for the university, implementing several LED retrofit and LED replacement projects that have resulted in energy savings up to 80%. He installed eight EV charging systems throughout the campus that would have cost tens of thousands of dollars if contracted out. And he developed a solution to bring electrical power to the campus food truck locations without the costly requirements of trenching and breaking up concrete sidewalks. So it's clear that Shannon's hard work and effort go far above and beyond invaluable and truly appreciated by the entire UH Hilo community. So congratulations and mahalo Shannon for your dedication and all you do for all of us. Can we hire like five more, 10 more? Can you come to every campus, please? Uh, like, I, I'm so nervous already. Um, but I want to thank the Board of Regents, you know, Kiakua, Makupuna, all my crew, my back there, Kenji Kubo. Uh, but before they have food, you know, I wouldn't be here. I want to thank the university for supporting me um mainly you know my bosses uh william walters Kalera Pogosa, and what uh, my university mom you know brenda hamani she you know <laughs> everything i do you know she backs me up and my mom too nikki for raising such a <laughs> beautiful son you know i want to thank the border regents again you know thank you 
Mahalo. 